well, well, well. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy, a very special Saturday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. A little bit cold outside, but you know what? Just the perfect time for a very early morning to do some magical internet money analysis. So without further ado, want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Just want to be wishing you well. And uh, let's get a live scene right here, right now. As Bitcoin doing, again, just the same same shit we've seen for the last week, really. Overall, uh, higher, you know, I'd say like the medium uh, picture is very clear. As long as we're above uh, 30 750 can't be too damn bearish as long as we're below 3950 don't want to be bullish of course overall as long as we're within this range basically playing between the yellow and the cyan moving averages right here i am leaning to the downside of course as it is an overall bear market and this is a more bearish setup coming off of a massive bearish engulfing dildo like this on pretty heavy volume but no follow-through as of yet or i mean a little bit of follow-through tread here although very quickly rejected before rejecting some upside right over here so again when we're talking about this sort of thing we're talking about overall hunts in this range to really get this one down we need to go down to the lower time frames actually the four hours getting it quite right and you can see that we do have a descending triangle for uh, forming at the current moment in time with basically supports right in the range that we spoke about 30 uh, 37 50 and resistance actually lower at 38 50 38 50 however if it were to be taken out i know i don't necessarily get bullish looking for you know like like an actual uptrend but i do look for a move to 39 50 where we will test the area that actually she could trigger that fact. So again, as long as Bitcoin's below 39.50, I am rolling with the assumption that overall I do want to be a seller. But if it were to get above 38.50, I would be looking for that move, you know, $100 higher most likely. Now, of course, in this current moment in time, uh, it is hinting some more downside. We do have a pretty nasty exponential moving average cross right over here on the four-hour total time frame, which has actually transferred over now officially to the five-hour as of the last tick. We do see these uh, moving averages gaining divergence away from each other, so that would be saying that the trend is strengthening to the downside. We do have our four-hour stokes opening and snaking down as well. We do have our, I think, five-hour might have crossed down as well. Uh, nope, they're actually crossed up right now, but we will be getting a new tick on this in the next three hours, so I'd imagine that that's going to be a little bit lackluster as well. Uh, three hour stokes coming down and I believe the two hour and one hour are freshly crossing down yeah there's your two hour there's your one hour so all of them healthily coming down and it is a weekend so I don't really want to get like too damn you know gung-ho with positions in fact I rarely have positions on weekends I don't enjoy having positions on weekends just because a lot of the time it's just hunt price action not like actual movement which we did see last week and the week prior to be fair so it's not always like that but more often than not you know it's 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 wick city and I really don't want any anything to to do with that on a weekend so overall that would be the lower time frames they are certainly some down here uh more preliminary support at 37 uh, 80 but we already tested that actually in the early morning hours um 3750 would be the more the more formidable one if that one does break i would be looking for a move down to at the very least 3600 probably a small bounce there and um and from there, actually work lower to uh, to 3,500. But basically, it all rides on this 382 Fibonacci tracement right here, which is coming in right around that 3,750-ish number. If that does get broken, yes, you do have that same support that we bounced off of a few days ago on the 27th of February. By the way, happy March um, at uh, 3,650. But uh, I do believe that we'd make our way fully down to the 618 Fibonacci tracement all the way down around here, fulfilling this massive horizontal, which, by the way, also would basically be retesting the this rising trend line, this rising support trend line that Bitcoin's been kind of riding up since it's put in uh, put in the lows of December, of mid-December. So again, that would make a lot of sense if that were to happen. But of course, I do want to be agnostic in a range like this. As a trader, um, you know, it's just a game of support and resistance until it's not. And right now, the game is very clear. It's supported. I mean, it's just it, it quite literally is just that. Uh, like I said, if you want to simplify for the medium time frame picture, look at the daily. And <laughs> there's really nothing to do until Bitcoin breaks below 3750 or above 3950. Now, if it does break above 3950 to the upside, to the more bull side, I actually would get bullish towards a, a, a move probably very quickly to 4200 and my personal opinion is that we'd be as that we'd probably you know reach beyond there at around 4300 so that'd be a pretty damn nice move um but of course the bulls need to prove it as this is an overall bear market the trend has been down the trend has been unchanged for over a year for well over a year now and there are certainly more things signaling down right now so i'm not necessarily looking for that that's not what i think is likely to happen but hey if it were to happen again opinion aside i don't give a fuck what my opinion is tentacle analysis says uh <laughs> watch out because bulls probably gonna, probably gonna get in more extended move and uh and work on prob probably a higher high over this guy right over here if that were to happen again 
Not what I think is going to happen, though. Uh, Daily Stokes still coming down, but R losing momentum, so that would be one point in the bulls, I suppose. Uh, Daily RSI, mm, not really doing anything interesting here, just trending below the exponential. Not necessarily a good thing, but not a death sentence by the same token either. Uh, Daily Jewel, quite literally right in the middle. This is as fucking generic as it gets. What about the 12 hour? I'm curious if the 12 hour is doing anything. Yeah, bouncing off this support, probably going to come back and test this area. And I would, I would imagine that we get some we get some action off that. But 12 hour stocks coming up, and all of those medium time frames are actually up right now. Everything above a four hour. I believe the six hour is down as well. Um, but again, you see the 12 hour being beheld in by this uh, 21 exponential, the, the, the yellow moving average right here, still trending below the exponential on the RSI as well. And it does, you know, for all intents and purposes, look like a descending triangle, look like a bearish continuation pattern. But of course, as I've said, with every fucking pattern in trading land, I don't care what you call it. I care about how you respond to price action when you get to a support and resistance. And right now, I'm kind of right in the middle. So hard to make a decision right now. I've seen every one of these fucking formations break out every goddamn which way. That's why I am a confirmation trader when it comes to actual breakouts which i is not the bread and butter of my game to begin with a, a trade support and resistance as you guys have seen uh this past week taking a few trades on live stream as they uh, as we got really lucky to, to catch this move right over here um uh, but i'm actually out of that right now and uh, pretty much neutral for the weekend anyways um two day over here uh two day stokes have fresh cross down we do have confirmation on this this is this is now set in stone and for the last year uh two day stokes crossing down has not been good for bitcoin i mean this you know th this area right over here here was getting the January highs at uh, 4100, 4200. This was your September high at 7400 before going to 6000. This was your early August high at uh, 8400 before going to 6000. This was your May high at 10,000 before going to 6000. This was your February last year double top at 12,000. So again, am you know am I bearish here? Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I am. Uh, but again, I'm, I, I can definitely be leaning bearish, but it's not necessarily time to have a position bearish. Um, as you know, similar thing for the for the daily stokes as well. Even more so, each and every time that they've crossed above the critical area for the last year, it's not been good for the bears. Or sorry, not not been good for the bulls. Been very good for the bears. You know, for all of their cocaine induced yacht parties. But uh, going back on, you know, same areas. You know, this was your September dump, August dump, uh, May dump, and uh, February dump of last year. All of the all of the major highs of last year. Essentially, don't have to go through them again. Don't want to bore you with that. But I do want to get on over here to the three day dollar time frame, which is very important and actually it makes this incredibly fucking difficult right now but i do have a resolution for this and this is going to be the bullish the most bullish thing that you hear me say all day uh this yellow 21 exponential in the three digital time frame has been a it's been an angel basically telling us about the more aggressive and overdone part of the ending rallies. What do I mean by that? Best to show it with just an example. Each and every time that Bitcoin's gotten above this yellow 21 exponential for the last year, it is called the end of the rally, essentially, where it'll it'll maintain above it for a little bit longer. And then eventually, once it breaks it back down to the downside, which we already have actually done and confirmed over here, then that's when gravity takes over and you return to the lows of your range. Well, let's just go back on over here and see what the last time was like this time. Uh, again, this was your this was your early September dump. Um, you spent about a half a week above it, and then straight down to the bottom of the range. The time before that was a little bit more, a little bit less precise, actually, in the uh, in the early August dump from eighty four. Um, but once we broke once we broke back mountain below this uh, twenty one exponential, straight down to the bottom side of the range. Well, the time before that was right over here in May of uh, at ten thousand, getting it very precisely. This last ditch effort of rally, breaking it right here, and then straight down to the bottom side of the range. And then the time before that, obviously, you know same same sort of deal but keep in mind this one it actually breaks it right here on the first on the first top because this was a double top and uh and actually does have a continuation on this dollar right here but find support on the red 10 simple moon average and then finds its way back above the 21 before putting in a double top and then down so actually that's in a way what we've seen right here Bit Mexico, however, is making this difficult because I do put the most weight on Bit Mexico when it comes to spot exchanges, and they closed below the 21 exponential. It was rejected on close by a couple bucks, which is significant. That is that is completely fine. Um, and you can see that you know we did have that nice reaction off the uh, off the 10 simple, but 
My point is, is that when I go over to the other exchanges like GDAX, uh, we actually ended above by, by, by a buck. If we go over to Bitstamp, we ended above by a couple bucks. If we go to Finex, we ended above by a couple of bucks as well. Sorry, not just a couple of bucks, almost $10. So again, when I'm looking at something like this and all of the exchanges are disagreeing with the one that I put the most weight on, I will revert to the other exchanges because it's, you know, it's... I've just found that that to be the best way, but this is a counterpoint to what I'm saying and why do you want to be agnostic in this range? Because if the other exchanges are right, we will rally right back to the prior high and probably beyond um, is what I'm thinking. So again, there's all sorts of bearish indications as far as things that I look for, but uh, but there is that fact in place right now, everything except save for a bit Mexico. Let's go check out GBTC over here, actually having a decent close on the week. Uh, this is your three days, so three days doesn't look as impressive, still being beheld in by the 21 exponential actually. Uh, but let's go to the daily. Daily closed above the 55. Um, well, is this the 50 or the 55 right now? I actually do have something to talk about on this. Well, let's, let's put on the 55. Yeah, actually below the 55. So which one's right is the real question. Is it the 50 or the 55? Well, I'm going to present a lot of information later on in this video uh, to that fact as I've had some time to really digest that. Um, but you can see that it actually was rejected by the 55. But if you put on the 50, it did take it out. So what is right? I mean, in traditional markets, actually, I use the 50 more often than the 55. Um, and the 50 has been getting things okay, actually, but the 55 has been getting things better on this, uh, on GBDC, funnily enough, you just kind of have to see what, you know, who, who, what the operator is running is the operator running a 50 or a 55, you know, and this goes for all indicators there. There's always like very slight variations of these. Sometimes you see people like have them a tick off or tick or tick above, you know, shit like that. Um, so let's actually go on to CME futures now, by the way, just as we're here on GBDC, GBDC daily soak still headed healthily down GBDC, um, RSI is still, still overall bearish. I mean, you can actually see a rising channel forming here, something like this, which yes, you certainly, you actually, I would actually put more weight on formations that you put in a, in an RSI than, um, than uh than price action funnily enough i just see them play out more often than not anyways um as long as gbdc is below four dollars and uh 90 cents overall i am very skeptical of this guy but we could very easily have another you know stab to this area if spot charts were to get back to that 4200 number um by the same token, you know, as long as we're below there, it's actually pretty healthily bearish, just still making lower highs and lower lows. I mean, that's all it's been doing uh, for the last year. So again, this right here, just another lower high. And with those higher time frame uh, oscillators turning around, I would be thinking that it's it's actually, you know, I mean, I look at the lower time frames and this wants to rally. It's very clear. It's very fucking clear. I mean, four hours stokes just cross the upside, but the higher time frames are bearish. So overall bearish outlook, but lower time frames can rally all the way back here. And maybe we do put in that double top. Um, could very easily happen. Uh, let's go check out CME. CME futures closing the week at uh, 3820, uh, basically on the high of the rally yesterday, funnily enough. But uh, same thing over here. Actually, we have something a little bit more obvious, a little bit more of more representative of an ascending triangle coming off of this massive down. The gap, I believe, has been filled as far as I'm concerned. If we go over here to the daily, uh, we do see the 55 exponential still still governing price action. Uh, the red tensile moon average also governing price action as well. And more importantly, this just looks like a hunt above the 55 right here. Uh, if I put on my drawing tools, you will see that this is also be held in by the 382 Fibonacci tracement. So a lot of things coming in around here. This is what I kind of look at it as. This would be my first interpretation as of now um, because, well, the, the 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 volume on the breakage of this uh, of this formation of the upside, very, 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 very lackluster. This is typically what a hunt will look like. And then, you know, opening gap down on Monday uh, or sorry, late Sunday, uh, that's kind of what you want to see. And, uh, you know, if you look at the daily, yes, we did fill the gap. And then so far down, although... If this thing gets above 3850, again, that critical 3850 number uh, coming in once again, then I would be looking for a return to the highs um, of that run. I'd be looking for that. So, 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 so let's get back on over to Mr. Bitcoin. What else do we have to talk about? Um, I do want to be, I do want to denote this. I do want to run through this once again. The four hour diddle golden cross, right? The four hour diddle golden cross coming in all the way over here, which was, which happened a couple weeks ago, February 17th, which is immediately as we saw that that morning, I said, all right, don't really want to be bearish right now because for the last, you know, the, for, for the last year, even during the bear market, every time that we've gotten this, it's produced a pretty nice move. In fact, this one producing its own nice move of about almost 18% over the course of seven days before having this nice red dildo party. Now we had, now notice we have have lost the green 55 exponential over here critical and we're going to 
we're going to return to this in just a second, but let's go look through the last few times that we've actually initiated one of these crosses uh, during this past bear market. The last time being right over here, very similar to the 21 exponential in the three day, but actually getting things in a more in a more interesting way as far as I'm concerned. And this one, you know, produced about nine and a quarter percent move to the upside and took about six days for it to get faded. Um, and then look, as soon as it broke the green 55 exponential moving average right here, it was straight down. It was straight fucking down. Uh, let's go back to the time before that. The time before that being right here where you get the cross uh, looking like that. And we have a nice 25% move from bottom to top, taking a little bit under 14 days, under two weeks. And look at this. As soon as you break the 55 to the downside right over here, rallies over, return to the low of the range. The time before that was right over here in May run of ten of about 6,000 to 10,000. We had a 22 and a half percent move and it took about, you know, it took about uh, 16 days or so. Um, and then also notice here when Bitcoin, Bitcoin did flirt around the, the 55 exponential a couple of times, but this first time actually did get, once we, re, once we retook it back up to the upside, it was, it was on to new highs. But the second time that we took it out, more importantly, uh, it was returned to the lows. So again, just kind of getting a gauge of what, oh, what the past history has been. And then of course, the only time before that, that we've seen a, uh, golden cross in the bearish market was right here. Another, uh, you know, 12, 12% gainer in the span of uh, six days. Once we broke the 55 it was just straight down after that to from 12,000 to 6,000 so again uh, we obviously have broken the 55 or the the green 55 right over here we are being beheld in by it. We've actually floated around with it once and then twice, but not able to both open and close the dildo above it, which is the most important thing as far as I'm concerned. And uh, when you were judging overall strength and you get an idea of what this is, of what this is capable of, as I wipe out the sleep from my eyes, uh, just waking up myself, by the way, um, is... The, the strength of this golden cross is kind of like right in the middle. It wasn't up there in the 20s, like the like the most powerful two that we saw. It wasn't down there in, well, the single the single digits, like the most weak one that we saw, but it was right smack dab in the middle, taking about seven days, which is kind of in the middle as well, on the lower side, definitely on the weaker side, which I would have actually been a little bit unexpected seeing this first move. This first move was pretty damn good, you know, a 10% move right off the, you know, right off the bat. Um, but Typically speaking, when you saw those golden cross, you saw you basically saw one one move up, reaccumulate, and then another move up, and then fade on pretty much all of them except for one. Um, so again, when I'm looking at something like this, it you know it does it does belie in the camp of of more downside uh, more immediately. So again, just putting you know putting together the case for for both sides, I do see more things pointing to the downside um, than the upside. But again, like I said, agnostic agnostic. Do not want to have do not want to be forcing my opinion on the price action. I want to be very fluid with how it reacts around here because I do not have a position right now. So if, you know, if we do take out 38.50 to the upside, it might even be a buyer. Um, as I don't see anything stopping you from 30, you know, above 39 and then maybe sell that on the first pass probably does bounce for a scalp. Um, but if we take out 39.50 to the upside, I mean, this thing's, this thing's going to be a, a straight shot back to the former highs and probably beyond. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, I would not want to be, you know, it's, if, if you are, if again, it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. If you see a very, if, if I see a very quick move through this 39.50 area, I will, I will take, I will get out of that scalp as soon as fucking possible. Um, um, anyways, uh, going on to the margin positions over here on uh, on good old data mesh, we can see that we have we have a little over twenty four thousand open longs. Nothing's really changed here, actually. Little little over eighteen thousand open shorts with uh, almost two thousand these guys uh, hedged. So really about sixteen and a quarter open naked. What does that mean? Well, again, the big news here, as far as I'm concerned, is is just this. Nothing more than this. Is first things first. We have a great imbalance. The ratio is heavily in favor of the longs and the shorts. That's a big problem when we're you know trying to dig yourself out of a bear market. One of the reasons why, one of the big reasons that tells me that Bitcoin is not out of a bear market. More importantly, but if we put on the drawing tools over here um, as well, very important. Uh, just to keep on repeating the word report. No, oh my God, it's probably so annoying. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but this red box territory here, each and every time that the shorts have gone into this area for the last year, especially when there has been a ratio imbalance as well, there has been major dumps initiated. Again, going back through it, you know, we have a very similar setup with all those higher timeframes turning around like we saw. 
and uh, and also the underlying market dynamics. I mean, this this was your February double top at twelve thousand before go, going to six thousand. This was your May top at ten thousand before going to six thousand. This was your August top at eighty four hundred before going to six thousand. This was your you know before before going from six thousand to three thousand, which not really a top, but you know what I mean. And then same thing. We're once again in this area. Obviously, you can stay here for quite some time as we did uh, in the past, but it is on the radar, and that is why I'm overall bearish and why I am looking for you know some nice downside because historically speaking. This has been completely accurate. Not only that, but the crypto fear and greed index, the the other kind of external factor that I will look at from here, uh, you know, here and there. Uh, just making sure. Oh my God, my screen, my screen behind looks absolutely awful. Apologies about that. Um, you can see that we're taking out a 41 right now, which is neither high nor low. Um, it's, it's actually on the higher side for a bear market. But uh, just the other day, we were actually at a 69, which was the highest it's ever been in the last year, except for one other point, which was literally one year ago at February, you know, middle of February during that double top at 12,000. So what does this mean? Well means that people are getting extremely excited, extremely optimistic when Bitcoin had really not, you know, done anything different. It had not changed the trend. Nothing on the macro picture has changed, which we'll go through in just a second. But overall, looking at this, when everyone's excited, when Bitcoin is still making lower lows and lower highs, or more importantly, lower highs, uh, that offers up the immense potential for a trap, which is what we saw on Sunday, right? Going from 4,200 to, to 3,800. Um, so overall, this tells me that, again, the market is still not, it's it, it's getting mature in this bear market, but it's still not it's still not quite there. Um, just kind of lining up. And each and every time that, that this marker has gotten above the 50 mark, it has lined up with a major dump as well. Again, this was your double top in February of last year at 12,000. This was your top at 10,000 in May last year. This was your top at, uh, at, at 8,400 in August last year this was right before 6,000 broke um, and of course we were higher on the optimism charts than any other time except for again one year ago at 12,000 so very strange you know and uh, again just another another underlying market dynamics suggesting that fact okay what else do we have to look at um, we got Bitcoin back on over here I'm sure uh, you can all see the 236 is coming in right around that 3900 number um, let's put on the volume profile. I actually haven't done that in a while. And let's see what he's saying right now. Uh, yeah, we're like kind of right at the at the point of control now, aren't we? So again, if it does break up to the upside, this is what I'm saying. There's, you know, there's really nothing stopping it from the prior highs. And then you can see after that, there's there, there's nothing above that. I mean, this thing this thing technically could rip. Uh, I mean, it's it's this. The saying is the way you go down or sorry, the way you go up is the way you go down and the way we went up is straight up and the way we went down was straight down. Well, it also follows the opposite way as well. So Bitcoin did get some momentum here. Uh, you're likely to rip through the four thousands. Um, <clears throat> but again, you got to be very, you got to be very careful with what I say. I'm not bullish. I don't believe that the lows are in. I don't believe that the market cycle is done just yet. I think that is very mature. I think that is, I think that's getting pretty damn ready, but not quite there. In fact, let's go over that right now. What would I need to see in order to flip around my perceptions from not being bearish? Because as far as I'm concerned, this is not synonymous with what I am, with, with what I've seen as major market lows. Does that not mean that you can't have rallies. Of course, you can have rallies. You can have your rallies in your bull in your bear market. You have your dumps in your bull market. But the point is, is that as far as the macro picture is, uh, has, is going, nothing's really changed. And those things that I look for to be demonstrative of a major market cycle low are just not present. Again, if you want a full on explanation of this, go check out the playlist titled Long Term Analysis. It'll go into much more detail than I will right now, but I'll briefly mention it. Again, the the volume on the low is not synonymous with what I want to see. The reaction off the low is not synonymous with what I want to see. The time spent at the low is not synonymous with, with what I want to see. The return to the low right here, not synonymous, not 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 congruent with Bitcoin's personality. Um, the MBT signal not signaling a low. The uh, historical volatility rank not signaling a low. What else we have? Um, the the underlying market dynamics that we just looked at, the longs and shorts, completely completely reversed from what I want to see on a low. And of course, uh, what's the other one? The crypto fear and greed index, which is what we just looked at, not signaling a low either. So again, as as with that in mind, I don't consider this. I don't consider bear market over unless if three other fail safes basically get hit. The first thing being if Bitcoin could both open and close a weekly deal above this purple 200 exponential moving average right here at 4100, that would be a big deal. I'd drastically change my tune, and we probably have a run into the into the deep 4000s if that were to happen. But obviously, that's well and far away. It's not happening anytime soon. We have to first close one over before we can actually both open and close one over. Uh, uh, over. Then the second thing and extremely important would be the monthly getting above the yellow 21 exponential. 
it, you know, again, where I come from in traditional markets, I used to use the 20 exponential on, um, on stocks, you know, as, as a market maker authorized trader to judge if it was generally bullish or generally bearish. Well, if we're below it, we're generally bearish. If we're, if we're above it, we're generally bullish. And as you can see right now, we are we are well below it. We've been opening and closing uh, monthly deals below for quite some time. We're actually comfortable below it, which is very concerning. Let me just uh, let me also just offer up the perspective that the last time that Bitcoin was in a bear market, the second that it got back up above the yellow 21 exponential, that was just straight onwards and upwards with beautiful momentum as well. So I'd offer, I would even argue that that was the best entry. Um, and then the third and final, but you're probably gonna know beforehand is Bitcoin gets back above 6,000, the area that it spent about a year going sideways upon, that's gonna be a good sign. That's gonna be basically a uh, full bull ahead. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, yeah, sure. There might be hunts and, and all that good stuff, but as far as technical analysis goes, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I take the signal when I get it. Cause that's, that's what the edge is. Otherwise, what's the fucking point of playing the edge? Um, so while we're here, so yeah, as long as none of those things have, have been hit, I'm going to be running with that assumption that the lows are not in. Uh, but of course, going back to the weekly, if you if you are a longer term type person, understand that you know it's actually quite simple. As long as Bitcoin's between this pink 200 simple moving average and this purple 200 exponential moving average, there's really nothing new to be done. Um, you know, all we're doing is just kind of consolidating in this area, as verified by the price structure, as verified by the volume signature as well. So with that said. I do look at the pink 200 simple moon average to be kind of like the 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 rising support trend line, uh, as well as the 200 exponential to be the you know kind of like the flat resistance trend line. But uh, but as long as Bitcoin's above that 200 simple moon average, it's not really appropriate to be super bearish looking for new lows. I mean, of course, it's rising above the current low. But my point is, is that as soon as Bitcoin breaks that that pink 200 simple moon average, which actually would line up perfectly with this rising support trend line. Whoops, let's go back on over to Big Mexico. This this rising support trend line right over here, which is coming in around about 3,400 now. Um, then I would immediately get extremely bearish looking for a move into this next blue box territory um, down around here, uh, marked off by the space between 2300 and 2600, which is also the, the, the 886 retracement, which is, act, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, right over here, taking off the same sort of retracement. We have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area as well. We also do have some massive volume profile, uh, high value nodes being thrown down in this area. You'll notice that as soon as 3300 is lost, uh, it's a straight shot down, just like what you saw from 6,000 to high 3,000s. Uh, if we go over here to the BLX index, you'll also notice that the 377 exponential is coming in right around uh, 2,600. If we go to the monthly, you'll see that it's coming in right around, or sorry, the 89 is coming in right around uh, 25, a little under 25 actually, 2450 if you want to get super exact. But more importantly, while we're here on the monthly, and going and keeping in mind what we just spoke about as this whole last three, four months, looking at consolidation below 4,000, you know, uh, again, the price structure, the volume signature, all these things kind of coming into contact with each other. I do, I am playing with something new. And this is this is the new thing to talk about. And that is using a 50 exponential moving average rather than a 55. If I use a 55, Bitcoin did not break it on the last monthly. Um, we actually ended up health, we, we actually uh, ended up healthily above. However, I've been using the 55 in cryptocurrency because I've, I've noticed it to work better. But in traditional markets, I use the 50. And when I put on the 50, you can see very easily that we've actually just rejected from it one, two, three times. This is what held Bitcoin up on, um, on the first major dump down in November. But after that, Bitcoin failed it, opened and closed below it, and test it, retested as resistance. And to me, this would be heavily bearish because if this is consolidation, as we looked at on the lower time frames, verified by the price structure and the volume signature, then these two moving averages right here are going to be like a signal as when they cross, we have a 10 simple and a 21 exponential, then that would likely very, it's, it's not likely, it's going to intensify the bot and algo selling and likely be the impetus for this consolidation breaking to the downside if and when these guys actually cross, which they will cross next month, barring any sort of a major to run back up above 5,000 in the meantime, which of course anything's possible. But when I look at something like this, um, you know, as long as we're below the 50 exponential, which is actually at 3880, I would be running with, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not sure if, if running with this assumption would be the right term because I don't, 
I'm not completely sure just yet, but when I do back test the 50 exponential in place of the 55, it does work actually a little bit better. Look at the, this is the 50 right here, which actually has been governing our highs ever since Bitcoin, you know, broke down from 6,000. We got uh, tag one, tag two, three, four, we break out above it and then we base on it right over here. Let's put on the 55 and back test this and you'll see very clearly that actually it's not as precise. No touch, no touch, touch, so we got one, but look at this over here. It actually breaks it to the downside right over here and then buoys it up. Whereas on the 50, it did not break it to the downside right here. It actually held it all the way through. So it lies less. So on the daily, the 50 actually is better as far as I'm concerned. So does that carry on over to the monthly? I mean, you know, again, I wanna see what the operators are, are, are using their inputs for, for trading something like this. And it seems to be that the 50 is actually more accurate and I was wrong about using the 55 before. So again, that drastically changes the picture, right? Um, and something that I do want to be cognizant of because that's one of the big things that I've been running off of. Does that not mean that we can't have a run up above that, that exponential uh, again? No, of course we can. But at the end of the month, if there's another wick below, or you're likely going to see another wick below if that's the right way to look at it because that's showing comfort. That's showing comfortability. I mean, if we can go back to the monthly right over here again, we did just set another monthly in, in place. The SOS are still gaining momentum to the downside. I mean, this is, you know, this is pretty crazy. I mean, we can spend a long time in the overbought and oversold regions of these things. Um, you know, on the Stokes, I mean, the last time that it got, you know, quote unquote, above the overbought, bro, overbought bro zone. I can't even do it right now, man. I'm too tired. Uh, it's It stayed there for a year. This was all one year's worth of price action. This time over here, when Bitcoin was below, was about 10 months. Uh, so a significant, a significant chunk of change and uh, something that I do want to be cognizant of. I mean, monthly RSI is... I mean, it, I mean it's, that's bearish. It's not, it's not bullish. Uh, we are trending below the exponential, but at, at some point in time, we will come back and retest this area. In fact, it, you know, if, <laughs> if I were to look at this, I'd actually be thinking to myself, this is a rejection of the bearish control zone. We want to go back and test this area. But again, this is the lowest that the RSI has ever been in Bitcoin's history. Um, so that is something that I want to look at. Uh, although I should say that uh, according to the accumulation distribution indicator, uh, the net delta indicator, um, we are getting a lot closer to the end of this bearish market than not the slope has turned positive. That is a big fucking deal. It's the first time that we've seen a positive slope since, you know, March of last year. Um, and uh, yes, we did it. We have seen fake outs in the sky before, no doubt about that. But overall, I would be looking for this, you know, to, you know, the, the next tick is going to be a big insight into this. If we tick up from here, I don't think it's going to go back down, actually. Um, funnily enough, and that actually did call the end of the last bear market pretty damn well as far as the low getting in. So, so, so definitely something to keep in mind as well. Um, overall, let's go check out what Mr. Buterall and Mr. Buttersworth are doing. Mr. Buterall, right over here, 130, 130, oh wait, no, that's uh, BitMexico. Let's go over to uh, Finex. Uh, no, that is Bit, that is Finex. Holy moly, man. Uh, Mr. Buterall actually looking a little bit sick here, getting really dangerously close to that uh, yellow 21 exponential moving average. I don't like what I see here. I mean, Mr. Buterall is, more, is the most bearish of the big three. Litecoin's the most bullish. Bitcoin's kind of like neutral. Um, but you see the 10 simple, just very obviously caressing price action here and then corralling it down. Uh, daily Stokes still headed healthily down, losing a little bit of momentum there, but that's okay. Daily RSI trending below the exponential, not good either. Getting just the neutral control zone. The uh, Jewel not telling us shit right now, unfortunately. Um, what else do we have? Uh, let's go down to a four hour. What's four hour saying? Four hour looks like it wants to break. I mean, this looks like a descending triangle and it looks like it, it really wants to break. You see divergence between these two moving averages right here, the yellow and the, and the green, telling me that the trend is getting stronger. We do have a bearish break on the RSI, looking at me like it is uh, trending below the exponential now, getting ready to break. Four hour stokes, fresh cross down. Uh, let's see, how, how high does this go? Uh, five hour stokes, fresh cross down. Six hour stokes, fresh cross down. Um, you know, this one, if I was, if I was just looking at Mr. Buterall, I would be bearish and I would be looking for this to break down like, you know, <laughs> to, soon, <laughs> I'll put it that way. And I'll be looking for a move down around here around 126. Now, of course, uh, this is, this would be, yeah, this, this would be the measure move off this formation right here. Uh, so about one, sorry, not 126, uh, 130, 133, 131 and a half, 131 and a quarter, something like that. Uh, by the same token, though, same thing as Bitcoin, you know, if I do see that area break, yeah, you probably do have a bounce right around there. 
there. It also is the 50 uh, exponential on this guy. Um, but overall, I'd be looking for a retest of the 618 Fibonacci retracement all the way down here at 117, which would also be fulfilling a retest of this broken trend line going all the way back from May of last year, starting at $800, which we broke out of a couple weeks ago. And if we could come back and retest it, that would make a lot of sense. Also fulfilling a retest of this rising support trend line, forming an overall massive fucking bear flag. <laughs> So again, uh, overall, you know, there, there's certainly more bear signs here than not. The question is, you know, really on a bear flag, you want to be selling more close to, to the overall resistance. So whoever got a position at the 160 above 160 is phenomenally done. Um, as this is a rejection of the of the 200 simple, but uh, overall, Mr. Buterall bearish as long as we're below. I mean, really 200, uh, especially 200 dollars, but even a little bit above there. If you want to be more conservative. Uh, so yeah, let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Mrs. Litecoin, definitely the most bullish of the bunch. Uh, re uh, testing this area that we spoke about yesterday. We were watching this on stream yesterday. It was actually grinding this area as we were uh, as we were watching. But look at what it's done with a rejection like this. What are we essentially doing? We're making some sort of a rising channel. Perhaps better seen on a four hour. There we go. Actually way better seen on a four hour. So I don't know what's going on miss with Mrs. Litecoin. She's definitely had the best reaction out of them all. But overall in a bearish pattern, the volume catch risks are synonymous with that of a rising channel doesn't mean it's always gonna break up to the downside but this one wants to come down it looks like to me four hour stokes fresh cross down what about daily daily stokes lose momentum but still down um, and to me that is a rejection off this resistance when we saw Bitcoin get up to that almost 3850 ish area resistance before you know getting shuffled right back down of course this one a little bit of a different story you do have major support at $44 if $44 does break I would be I would get instantly bearish all the way to about 39 and a half dollars but for now uh, it's got a lot to chew through and this is probably the it's, it's the best argument against um, against Bitcoin and like the greater general sphere uh, crypto sphere being in a bear market let me just make sure that my video is still working it is awesome great good because unfortunately um i actually don't have that much battery in my camera today it looks like it is a little bit fuzzy so perhaps that's right perhaps that's why um let's go check out uh i'm curious what the other uh what the other top shit coins are doing we got zcash zekel cash electric coin whatever the fuck coin right over here bearish wants to come back down to the low side of the range making an overall descending triangle b cash making basically the same thing. I mean, this is this is what it's doing now. And yes, you definitely can redraw this as new information comes in, but that's also why I hate diagonal, or sorry, yeah, diagonal trend lines because you, you can redraw them. <laughs> They're not very precise. Uh, but over here, making another ascending triangle, daily stokes down, daily RSI trending below the exponential. I mean, not fucking good. Tron cash, Tron cash breaking. So I was making an exception for it, kind of, kind of giving it the benefit of the doubt the other day saying, hey, as long as we hold this trend line, you could make the argument for a rising... Uh, uh, an ascending triangle, but nope, that goes out the window. And you know, we do have major support at uh, 2.19 cent down down around here, or sorry, about 2.2 cent. Um, but overall, breaking down, just making another. You know, <laughs> looks like a distribution pattern actually. Uh, daily soaks coming down as well. Looks like it wants to come down. Daily RSI headed to the bearish control zone, trending below the exponential. Not fucking good. Uh, Neo Cash, what's Neo Cash doing? Uh, getting rejected right at this resistance, 940, and likely coming down. Uh, support at 880. If that area fails, I'd be looking down towards, I mean, I suppose $8.36, something like that. EOS Cash, uh, another another one of the better actors, actually. Another one of the better better actors, uh, along with Mrs. Litecoin, but still getting rejected right at the 10 cent moon average, uh, right at this $3.70 region, as long as it's happening. Hard to be bullish. If you get above there, then yes, I would be looking for another run above $4.14. But for now, you know, support at uh, 3 dollars if that breaks, bad. Really fucking bad. Uh, XRP Cash, where's my XR? I want my XRP chart, there we go. Uh, 31 and a half, 31.4 cent. Again, just still filling out this descending triangle. You know, you're probably noticing a pattern by now, right? Uh, as long as we're below three, uh, 32.7 cent, this is just uh, filling out a filling out a descending triangle. I mean, Peter Brandt said it perfectly the other day. This this price action is what you see during. <laughs> For assets that typically don't end too well, but again, I I would never short Ripple. I don't believe in shorting Ripple. Ripple does its own thing. It's 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 an anomaly. It's it's different um, in that way. I don't want to incite the XRP army, but I also want to be realistic as well because if this thing gets above thirty four and a half cent, it will have a quick move towards forty cent. However, by the same token, if it does break uh, twenty nine, what is this about? Yeah, about twenty eight and a half cent to the downside. I uh, would be looking for a move down into the lower 20s, high high teens, something like that. It's not going to be good. 
Um, okay, what else we have to look at? Monero cash. Can we do Monero cash, cash really quick? Uh, decent reaction as well, but getting stifled at the uh, at the 89, and still finding support along this along this guy. But looking heavy here, getting rejected by the 10 simple daily stoke still down. Daily are they they all look the fucking same, man. They all look the goddamn same. Um, but going back onto uh, onto Bitcoin Cash over here. Sorry, the real Bitcoin, not not uh, not, not 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 the cash. Um, and yeah, you know, again, it, I mean, this this formation right here looks like a very small descending triangle, most likely with uh, with an overhead resistance at thirty eight thirty. If you want to make decisions faster, we looked at this last night as well, where we had we actually caught a couple of these uh, wicks above. Again, I don't, you know, I, I didn't take that trade myself, obviously, but I'm sure that um, I know that a lot of people did. So hey, congratulations, not a bad scalp at all. Um, and you might actually even get a move here too. So, 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 did I cover everything that I wanted to say? Have I done enough damage? Have I, have I bored you enough just yet? Well, I think that's probably gonna do it actually. Again, if uh, for, for the very quick wrap up, quite simple quite simple as long as bitcoin's above 37 uh 3750 don't want to get too damn bearish although overall my opinion would be bearish we're in a fucking bear market after all uh but if 3750 does break i would be looking for a quick move down to about 3600 and probably beyond that after after a little bit of a bounce um by the same token 38 uh, sorry 30, 3850 to the upside if 3850 to the upside gets taken out i would be looking for a move towards 3950 i'd probably try a scalp on the first pass but if it does take out if we have a quick move above 3950 i do not want to be short in fact i would even consider a long as it's very extremely likely to get back to the prior high at around 4200 and on and honestly my opinion at that point is that we'd go up and test the weekly uh 21 somewhere around 43 to 4400 that's just my personal opinion anyways um that's going to do it for this video this morning hope that you're having a beautiful uh saturday hope that you're having the best saturday possible as always i'll be back in the discord a little bit later might even get a little bit more sleep as well but you know what it's all good because it's a cryptocurrency saturday so anyways want to be wishing you well and uh pleasure to speak with you i'll be back on tomorrow with some more uh with some more video action, some more long-term analysis action. Stay tuned for the for, for the new entry in the psychology series later today. And then also tomorrow, I will debut the, the new options tutorial series. So that's going to do it for now. Looking forward to see you, seeing you soon. Take care.